بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ گڈ مارننگ ایوری ون اینڈ وی وارملی ویلکم یو آن بیہاف آف گیونگ بیک ٹو فارمیسی ان پاکستان اگین آن دا ڈے ٹو آف اوور فرسٹ ورچوئل کانفرنس مائی نیم از منصور خان آئی ایم دی چیئرمین آف دی سائنٹیفک کمیٹی ٹوڈے وی ہیو این آنر آف ہیونگ کی نور اسپیکر ود اس ڈاکٹر حامد سعید ڈاکٹر حامد سعید از اے لیجنڈری پروفیشنل Professor Dr. Hamid Saeed graduated with B.Pharm from Faculty of Pharmacy, University of the Punjab in 1999. And uh, then he got uh, MPhil in pharmaceutics from the same university. And later on, he went to uh, Denmark to complete his PhD from the University of the Southern Denmark. And then he joined University of the pa- uh, Punjab uh, Pharmacy College in 2011 as assistant professor. And later on, he went to Canada to continue his postdoctoral uh, research in the field of the stem cell. And uh, then uh, he joined uh, University of the Punjab as, uh, uh, as a professor of pharmaceutics. He has published more than 60 papers in peer-reviewed journals. And Dr. Hamid Saeed is also running his own Uh, lab which is the stem cell lab and he's uh, doing a lot of uh, predictive and prognostic biomarkers particularly for breast cancer which is helping in the era of the precision medicine and uh, we are very fortunate to have dr hamid said uh, with us uh, dr hamid said go ahead please uh, uh, thank you very much uh, dr mansoor uh, it's my pleasure uh, to give the talk on uh, on from this platform so i will start with my uh, presentation So uh, uh, again, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, my name is Professor Dr. Hamid Saeed. Uh, I am working at the Department of Pharmaceutics, University College of Pharmacy, University of the Punjab. Before starting with my presentation, I would like to thank the organizers uh, associated to with giving back to pharmacy in Pakistan. I think it's a very remarkable initiative Uh, because it will help in technology transfer, in capacity building, and in guiding the pharmacists of Pakistan, and they can develop the skills and be, become more competitive for the jobs abroad. And I would especially thank Professor, uh, sorry, Dr. Mansoor Khan for this initiative and for the invitation. I will be talking about empowering the pharmacist uh, from management to leadership, You know, uh, this topic is very important as far as the Pakistan's pharmacy profession is concerned, primarily because we do not have um, true leaders in the pharmacy profession. Uh, we, we do have many pseudo leaders that watch their own interests, and they, uh, but the pharmacy profession is still at this point where it was probably 10 years back. So disclosures, financial, I am a salaried full professor at University College of Pharmacy, University of the Punjab, Lahore. Non-financial, I have no financial relationship to disclose. I am a reviewer of several peer-reviewed journals and funding agencies of Pakistan. So the question is, uh, why to empower the pharmacists? And the answer is very simple. Uh, we wanted to prevent the diseases and ensure the well-being of the patients. We all know that the most common intervention in healthcare uh, is, uh, is uh, medicine. So for that, doctors prescribe uh, uh, medicines and generate prescriptions. And prescription is a very um, technical uh, piece of paper that requires skills to interpret and to comprehend and to uh, have a proper use of medicine for the patients. So there is enormous concern about the problems in the use of medicine and in Pakistan, it's in even more compared to the developed world because of lack of education and that affects the health literacy as well. And several lines of evidences suggest that the most common misadventure in this regard is the gaps and delays uh, in the communication. And this one statement clarifies all that I have 10 minutes by a primary health care provider that I have 10 minutes per appointment, not to dress, not only to test the patient concerns, but also gain a holistic understanding and form a relation with them to address any wider determinants of health. So I think this one statement clearly states that doctors do not have time to educate and counsel the patient with regards to the use of medicine. 
and I always say to my students that you go to the doctor, he's very good at diagnosis, but then you are not able to take the drugs properly. The diagnosis doesn't treat you. It's the medicine who is going to teach you. So you need to know how to use the medicine properly. And for that, we certainly have to empower the pharmacists so they can have their due role in the clinical settings in the community pharmacies as well. And for that, we need to develop the managerial skills, the leadership qualities of the pharmacists so, they, so that they can manage the pharmacies and the clinical settings in a well-organized way and prevent the uh, drug use problems. So management is a uh, mix. Uh, it's, it's an art of, um, uh, uh, art of uh, you can say, uh, uh, increasing the productivity by using and developing the people's talent uh, and ensuring with enrichment and growth with judicious use of resources. So there are certain elements uh, to have to become good managers like knowledge of the organizational structure and environment. It's very important that you need to know the organizational structure. Pharmacists managers should have formal, should have informal and informal ways of knowing who is who, what matters and how things work in this organization. Secondly, the human resource management because pharmacists manager, managers have to manage the people uh, for that, they have to hire the excellent people. Hiring the excellent people actually starts before you advertise the jobs. So you need to know uh, the job description, the um, competencies that you require from a certain person, the recruitment strategies, the screening methods, and giving a job offer. Then comes the motivation, and you have to motivate your employee, engage your employees to achieve these, these set targets. And for motivation, you have to have three major aspects that every employee would seek, like expectancy. So does the employee believe that he or she can achieve a certain tasks? And for that, he need to have the uh, certain pharmacy-related expertise, the support from the colleagues, and resources. Second comes the balance, which means that does your employee believe that he or she, if he or she will accomplish the task, he will get some personal benefits. For example, he will get appreciation or recognition from the peers or even the promotion. And lastly, instrument, instrument, in, instrumentality, which means if he achieves certain goal and if that uh, uh, resulted in the desired outcomes. For example, if he's working in the oncology ward and by working in that ward, he will be getting the certification to become oncology specialist. So uh, you need to have these motivating factors. So uh, you have to engage your employees as well. I will show you some of the factors that influence the motivation like attainment, uh, that you have to motivate your employees by constantly introducing new tasks because in routine work, it becomes so monotonous. So you have to keep on giving the new tasks, but on the, that build on one another. Uh, you have to have uh, ask them for the advice so you, they feel empowered. They should have sense of belonging. Uh, they have they should have some independence to get the job uh, job done. And you should uh, acknowledge their contributions and value their opinions and take care to be fair when making the decisions about the staff's work schedules, job titles, responsibilities, and pays, etc. Uh, then comes establishing uh, the goals and performance. And it's uh, very clear that you have to have very smart goals, uh, be specific, uh, well-defined goals, measurable, uh, know when the goals has been, uh, has been achieved, agreed upon uh, that all stakeholders know and agree on certain goals that you wanted to achieve. Be realistic that you can achieve the goals within the uh, available resources and it should be time-based. Uh, then comes the feedback. It's very important that you uh, provide, uh, get the feedback or provide feedback to the employees of their performance. Uh, feedback serves two purposes, preventive and corrective. And it also helps in identifying and addressing the potential problems that uh, you may face during the work. And failure, failing to provide the feedback means failure to manage. And another important aspect of human resource management is coaching for the success. 
So coaching is actually an interactive process by which you enhance the performance and capabilities of your employees. And so probably we also come across some of the terms like a bowling coach or a batting coach. So they actually particularly focus on the bowling cap uh, performance or improve the bowling performance and capabilities of their players. Uh, and in, another important aspect is communicating with the impact. Uh, you need to be a very good communicator, effective communicator. And communication can be like verbal communication through uh, body language, through written documentation, or uh, compelling uh, presentations as well. And the most important approach for that is the principle negotiation that you uh, uh, identify your own interest, you understand the interest of another party, and you then um, start uh, understanding and develop the potential options. You ensure that uh, evaluate certain possibilities, and then you reach to the agreement that benefit the both. Uh, afterwards, probably in our society, we do have several problems while you are managing the uh, um, you are manager in, a, in an organization, or you have to manage the conflicts that arise on daily basis. So regarding this, uh, to solve the problems, you have, you, the managers should have skills to first identify and define the problem. After you identify and define the problems, you analyze it, and then you uh, will be able to give the possible solutions for the problem. And the uh, good managers, they actually more focus on the problems and behaviors rather than the employees. So you need to listen to them and understand the, their concerns, feelings, and needs, and then explain to them how you see this problem and then give them potential solutions or alternative solutions that uh, probably is a workable solution. So you have a win-win solution uh, for the conflict or you solve the problem by uh, having a win-win situation. Organizing the team meetings, uh, it's imperative that you organize team meetings which set the tone for interaction between the manager and the employees and it actually is a true, truly a management initiation when you organize team meetings. So when you are organizing team meetings, you should have a very uh, supportive and non-threatening environment in the meeting. Uh, you may have a list of questions that your employees may ask from you, and you should use very um, uh, appropriate words and phrases to give a very concise answers that are, that, that, that are acceptable to everyone. And then, of course, good managers, they support their team, uh, support the team's success. For that, you communicate with them, you improve their skills, you train them, and you provide them uh, the desired resources. Uh, then comes the planning for contingencies and crisis and exit strategies. Um, the strategies, for example, for contingencies, it includes that you uh, uh, assess or identify the potential risks, uh, future risk, on any untoward event that may have uh, negative consequences. For that, you have to identify the risk, you have to set the priorities, you have to um, uh, uh, have the strategies to, uh, to intervene and overcome it, then implement it. So exit strategies mean that, for example, you are moving to another um, uh, organization. For that, you have uh, should have uh, exit strategy. It can be like a crisis level event, but it may not be. So this exit strategies, if you have, allow you to have uh, to uh, to uh, probably switch to another job on on uh, on a very positive note. So you have. Um, uh, an option that you have a succession plan, you you prepare a successor. So after you move on to another job, there is another person ready to take up the task that you were doing. So the company won't feel that you uh, uh, left them and they are now uh, have to find another person who is suitable for the job. Managing time, uh, you have to manage your time. That's an important thing along with the, the managing the people. And for managing the time, you know, need to know your workload. Um, uh, you know, you need to prioritize your uh, targets. You need to know your priorities. Uh, you should be very well organized and flexible in the emergent situations. Uh, you need to delegate the powers. And for that, you have to entrust your replies 
and give freedom to your employees to get the job done in a way that they deem it more suitable uh, in, in, within the time frame. Managing up is means that you consciously working up uh, to uh, to with your manager to get the best possible outcomes uh, for you, for your manager, and for your organization. Uh, never ever uh, uh, criticize your manager to others. Never uh, correct your manager in front of others. Uh, always be positive. Even uh, improve uh, the image of your manager, and always. Be in line with the um, with the vision of your manager. Accurate insight means that you need to know your plans and tasks, how your employees feel about it. Either they are uh, motivated to perform these tasks, so that will give you the accurate insight of your own vision about uh, achieving certain or uh, accomplishing certain targets. For example, you can have seek an advice from your employer employee or you can have a formalized process by which you can have group discussions from where you can get the idea that how the employees feel about your vision or plan uh, that you have um, asked them to uh, complete or you have a box where you get the advices always trace the changes in the behavior so you will get to know how uh, people react to your um, ideas so the um, daily day-to-day -day activities that may be delegated, for example, in a pharmacy, solving fairly routine patient care and dispensing problems, setting the daily work schedule and workflow, scheduling the appointment for patient care services, ordering medication supplies or equipment, so and so forth. So these can be day-to-day -day activities that can be delegated to your employees. So uh, uh, management is something that uh, uh, you, it's related to the operational uh, processes, but leadership is something different, that it's a broader vision or a mission that you wanted to accomplish. So in pharmacy profession, um, transition into leadership is often serendipitously, resulting in what's sometimes called accidental leadership. So the true leadership is the ability to mobilize and inspire others. It's not about the title or the position. As rightly pointed out by John C. Maxwell, he said that the true measure of leadership is in, it's, it's not its influence, nothing more and nothing less. So it means that uh, leadership is the process of influence in which one person is able to enlist the aid and support uh, of others to achieve the common goal and uh, the effectiveness of that can be measured both by the level and the outcomes of the decisions. So leaders can be like formal leaders and informal leaders. Formal leaders are those leaders that are bestowed with the leadership by the organizational authority. So they have the authority to hire, fire, and demote the people. Uh, while uh, the informal leaders, they uh, become leaders through um, their relations and experiences. Uh, so pharmacists, uh, for example, uh, 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 have the opportunities leadership uh, to get the leadership positions like uh, pharmacists uh, who develops a new teaching uh, skills, pharmacists who share innovative ideas during the meetings, uh, pharmacists who is frequently asked to present uh, in the therapeutic committees or high profile committees, and there are a number of other ways that uh, provides uh, you the opportunity uh, to show your leadership skills and that set the stage for you to become leaders of your profession. So what does it mean to be a leader? Uh, so John French and Bertram Rowan in 1959, they proposed uh, a theory of uh, power. So there are five sources of power. According to him is the reward power uh, that determines the uh, the uh, that who can become a leader like reward power is based on the personal ability some people have strong personalities some do not are not do not have very strong personalities legitimate power it's derived from followers perception what your followers think about you expert power based on the knowledge and expertise the referent power it stems from work person's charm or appeal and coercive powers based on individual's ability to threaten and punish. So, for example, if you are very vocal and you uh, target people when you are in meetings, that can also give you a chance to become, it's more frequently happen in our societies as well. So probably uh, leadership is a process. Um, um, uh, uh, sorry, leadership is 
something that uh, acknowledged by others uh, it is uh, as a result of your uh, determination or your determined vision your communication your skills your credibility your ethical behavior and your ability to mobilize the masses so that determines that uh, 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 you can become a good leader as well so there are certain characteristics of leaders like ability to articulate a compelling uh, vision for the future so they are very articulate articulative very vocal and they are very clear about their ideas or vision about their future plans and they are passionate to achieve their goals they are honest they are credible they they are ethically sound and they support the idea that they engage all the uh, talents together to achieve uh, the common cause they are very curious about their vision targets and goals they are daring they are willing to take the risk or they um, are willing to uh, challenge this status quo so there are certain behaviors and traits of effective pharmacist leaders so behaviors are something that you can change while traits cannot be changed behaviors uh, that are important for effective pharmacist leaders like act assertively you need to be very clear about your vision and targets admit mistakes challenges the status quo communicates well demonstrate integrity encourages others innovative listen and makes others feel important negotiate successfully provides good direction resolve conflict and stay involved so certain traits that uh, need to be uh, present in the leaders like they should be competent cooperative credible decisive diplomatic intelligent optimistic passionate responsible system thinker and they must be visionary so defining your leaders uh, shape potential like uh, what kind of leaders you are uh, they can be like affiliative leaders uh, leaderships like they masters at forging relations with others so the by doing networks and public relations they can achieve their targets and goals leaders can be like have been auto autocratic they make independent decisions without involving others such kind of leaders uh, they are they might be useful in crisis uh, otherwise normally in our societies like in democratic societies uh, such leaders are not very successful then comes the democratic they give all the members an option and weigh in the preferences and recommendations uh, laissez faire it uh, means if the leaders such kind of leaders provide critical resolution and uh, information but they do not give a very clear direction and then you have transformational leaders like they are charismatic they always think in a new way uh, and finally uh, servants that being at service to others uh, so the traits of pharmacy professionalism uh, that that's very important that you uh, uh, must be accountable for your actions decisions decisions and work efforts knowledge and skills of pharmacy profession you should have adequate knowledge and skills commitment to improving the skills and knowledge of both self and others trustworthiness creativity and innovative thinking ethically sound decision making pride in pharmacy profession service orientation and covenantal relationship with the uh, patients competencies for pharmacy leaders um, accurate self insight um, you need to know uh about for example there are two types of intelligence other than iq uh, it's emotional intelligence and the uh, uh social intelligence so emotional intelligence is the ability to uh, assess and understand the emotions of self and others and the social intelligence is the ability to understand and manage the human interactions and behaviors so that's how you can understand the emotions of others you can understand the behaviors and based on that you assess that your plans and uh, your ideas are taken up by the wise or not building business relationships uh, it's just it's all about the networking and public listening and based on that you achieve your goals building organizational talent good managers are always surrounded by talented people and they um, uh, in, they uh, preserve the talent they do not let the talented people go uh, for another to another organization and they retain them communicating with the impact they are effective uh, they have effective communication skills customer focus the customer um, uh, uh, is the prime focus of their uh, of all their plans and 
um, uh, achievements driving for results they are very much result oriented and they establish strategic directions they have strategies uh, in place to direct the employees to achieve certain goals executive presence they are well respected because of the traits they have the behavior they have and the professional knowledge and skills they have leading through vision and value they have a very clear vision a thorough vision and they have good moral and ethical values as well or professional values managing diversity they are managing different tasks at one time and they are good manage, uh, human resource managers as well operational decision making they are very good at making decisions uh, due, uh, regarding the employees regarding the operations the processes they are always keen in improving the processes to get the maximum out of uh, what they are doing out of uh, what they have uh, and they have professional or industry knowledge as well so developing the uh, potential uh, leadership potential you require sustained and deliberate effort so uh, you should always go for or pursue the leadership roles wherever you find in your organization uh, volunteer uh, for leadership roles whenever there is an option volunteer yourself find one or more mentors outside your organization who are good leaders and who are skilled leaders as well ask for difficult difficult assignment challenge yourself that will improve your managerial and leadership skills stay informed keep abreast with the modern knowledge about your profession observe others especially those who are leaders or managers read about the ideal leaders uh, develop emotional intelligence i already talked about it that you have in more, uh, other than iq you need to develop emotional intelligence and good managers and leaders they have good emotional have a sense of emotional intelligence and social intelligence as well do not wait to be ready do not wait that you will become chief executive and only then you will be able to lead the masses whenever you have a chance ready for that and lead the people distinguish between the management uh, distinguishing between the management and the leadership successful leaders are often skilled managers both uh, often overlap with each other leadership is about doing the th right things while management is about doing things right uh, leadership is more concerned about the broad general mission or vision while managers are more concerned with the operational details Uh, so lastly uh, i would like to uh, give a, a very brief overview how a pharmacist can extend their role in either in a clinical setting or or in a uh, you can say uh, in the in the in the uh, community settings so you have to discover uh, the skills so the important thing is first thing is associate yourself leave the pharmacy bubble uh, you can uh, like attend seminars literature experience other professions uh, so it this this gives you an idea about uh, some unrelated questions and problems and ideas from different fields to cultivate an insight so that you can implement in your profession as well uh, so questioning it's it's very important i will i always ask this to my students that if you do not question Uh, you will not be able to, and 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 uh, i think when i was doing my phd my supervisor said to me that you should ask question either it's a stupid question because for me for 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 you for me if you ask question for someone it can be a stupid question but for you if you understand or clear your mind that would not be a stupid question for you so playing the devils a devils advocate by asking why why not and what if challenge the status quo Uh, spend 15 to 30 minutes each day asking why and what if questions that challenge the status quo of your practice observe things that's very important probably i i observe that we are not very good observers so you need to observe uh, uh, things keenly detect small behavioral details in the activities of customers suppliers and other companies that suggest new ways of doing things so you need to spend time in observing the job needing to be done by your customer like patient nurses doctors and by doing by observing you can find out the gaps where you can extend your role as a pharmacist and then you come to the experimenting try new experiences exploring the world approach life and work with hypothesis testing mindset implement interventions and evaluate the results i think it's just like uh, for example um, you are doing certain things in a routine way and you are not getting the outcomes uh, that are desired 
you then have to um, examine the things and the diagnose where the fault lies. And then you, just like a doctor performs all these processes after examination, uh, diagnosis, you intervene. And after intervention, you get the feedback. Was your in, uh, intervention successful or not? And the last important thing is networking. Networking with individuals who are good leaders, who are at the helm of the affairs, so that if you have any idea to extend your role as a pharmacist, discuss with them to get the feedback from them. So you hold idea meetings to bounce the ideas of each other. And that's how you get to know either he liked the idea or not. And if he likes it, then you can request him to initiate that particular idea as well. So at the end, I would like to acknowledge my vice chancellor, Professor Dr. Niaz Ahmed Akhtar, Dr. Muhammad Islam, my colleagues, Dr. Furkan Hashmi, of course, University College of Pharmacy, University of Punjab. And thank you very much for, the, for this platform, giving back to pharmacy in Pakistan. Uh, it's a, a remarkable initiative and I'm always there to be with you guys. Thank you very much.